Hello and welcome back and that's right we're talking about Rio Link IP cameras again it's one of the camera brands I probably talk about more than any other here on the channel largely because they were one of the first brands that I've used IP cameras for and I kind of thought yeah they've got it right a lot of people when they are buying cameras for their home or their business needs in 2021 a lot of the time you're kind of drawn towards two different camps you've either got super 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 budget cameras that seem to be too cheap to be reliable and you kind of get them and you kind of take for granted they've got like a three month warranty they use proprietary software they can only connect to the cloud and they've got all kind of limitations built in where the cost of the device has been spread into those that have got to spend money long term at the other end of the spectrum you've got brands like axis producing cameras that are just insanely enterprising, although they are solid, solid business grade products. No one needs that to have a little camera in the corner of the house, a little camera out the back looking at the patio, do they? So, into the middle of all of those categories are a few brands that slip into the middle where they actually manage to give both value for money and good construction and good software and that was where for me Rio Link has always lived now whether you use it in conjunction with a network attached storage device as I do a QNAP or a Synology NAS or you use their own proprietary software generally you hear nothing but good things about Rio Link you can go through the rev reviews yourself and find out now this is one of their outdoor weatherproof IP cameras this is one that takes advantage of PoE power over Ethernet and this is the RLC 812A. It knocks around for about 100 quid, but the prices are pretty green right now. So again, that's subject to change. It may even be different from the what you see there on screen. It's an 8 megapixel camera that also does 4K UHD at 3840 times 2160. It is a decent little runner of a camera. And again, it's got the uh, spotlight inside that we've seen before for LED 100 feet night vision. But what's particularly interesting about this device is it has an element of AI recognition. It recognizes people and vehicles. And for those that have ever had a camera in their home or business environment that gets alerted every five seconds because someone's going for another coffee, that can get super annoying. But if you have a camera outside of your home or within your home and you need it to monitor certain areas of day on a schedule, you're going to want to know the difference between your cat and a person. If it's outside your house, you want to know the difference between leaves on the road and a car. And that's where that kind of AI support comes in. How much of that translates into third-party NVRs and network attack surveillance use? That's up for debate. But in of their own software, we've tested their software before in other videos, and we will check it out again today for this camera. But what we've seen time and time again is their software, although not exactly earth shattering, it's still very, very functional and does what it promises, which is one of the other reasons I've always kind of liked Rio Link for cameras. Now, let's have a look inside this box. What do we get for our money? Again, it's a bullet style camera. And this is a bullet style camera with PoE as well. Luckily, we've got PoE switch over there. We've got our operational setup instruction manual there. We have more information on other stuff there, presumably our warranty as well. We've got our big old Rio Link stickers that you put outside to warn everyone that you've got Rio Link cameras out there. You've got the declarations, which companies have now got to put in more and more ever since uh, Britain decided to go full Brexit and, I don't know, destroy itself or something. It's madness. Um, on top of that, you've got the installation guide and how to take advantage of the waterproof barrier cap that we'll talk about in a little bit of time there. Inside, we've got our Ethernet cable. And again, it's a Cat6 cable, which to me is real overkill for this camera. Don't get me wrong, it's PoE. You want a reliable cable. And it is quite short, I would say. But Cat6, with a good thickening design there, it's actually a decent little Ethernet cable. It's only a few quid extra, but it's a few quid extra the brand chose to spend. Um, we've got raw plugs and screws for installing the camera on a wall mount. We've got that waterproof container there that when you connect your Ethernet cable to the camera's own Ethernet connector, you can then encase it in this waterproof area here to make sure water doesn't get in. And that's really it for your internals there. So let's move that box there. Have a look at this dome camera. Now the 812A, we've never utilized this series before. We've looked at numerous Reolink cameras in the past, but this is part of their new uh, range of 4K cameras with that little bit of recognition support built in. It's got audio in and out. So it's got a mic in and a pretty decent looking size speaker for audio out for warning people around you. You've also got 
an SD card slot there based onto the rear of the device. So again, you can install up to a 256 megabyte SD card inside there. And unsurprisingly, um, for this incredibly contained unit, this is weatherproof. It's IP66 weatherproof, so that's fairly decent rainfall amounts, dust proof, that kind of stuff. It's a very contained and a well-weighted unit, I would say, as well. On the back there, we have got our connector there for the RJ45. We've also got, if you're going to use uh, an injector, a power injector, on top there. And you've also got the reset key there as well. But again, you can contain that quite easily. It's a very, very well-designed camera and metal as well. I don't know how well you can hear that. It's a metal camera surround there. So it's a quite a rugged quality feeling product there. Um, and again, we will test this out very shortly now on uh, the software there to see what Reolink have done with it, what it's capable of. Maybe test out some of those 4K settings where possible as well. But for now, we're even early doors, I'm quite impressed by the architecture of the device and it's incredibly compact. When you look at some of their other bigger, earlier cameras, and we have several of them dotted around this office indeed, we've got one right there, I've just realized. As cameras go, it's front of decent little build there but I think the real proof is going to be how well does the software run and how well does the camera recognize things let's make our way over to the screen okay so we're on the desktop here and we're going to be looking at the Reolink RLC 812A in a number of ways on screen there you should be able to see on the left hand side of the screen us accessing the camera via the web browser but also on the right hand side of the screen you should see that I'm utilizing the mobile app as well to give you guys some idea about how things look I'm slightly off camera here but if I lean back and bring the microphone with me you should be able to see me slightly on camera and chances are you're going to see an ever so slight difference there in fidelity between the app and the web browser largely that is because uh, the web browser has a slightly different refresh rate and we're running it in um, a bandwidth optimized mode there on the Reolink browser there. But if we're going to the Reolink desktop app, because they do have a desktop app there, you can see it's a little bit sharper there. You can see a QNAP NAS there on the table. You can see a lot of the recording area that we use in other videos. And this is all being accessed via the local network. If I switch over to the mobile phone, which you'll probably see me grab there on screen, we can see lots of options. So if we go through some of the options there on camera, first thing we'll do is we're gonna test out the microphone feature. Hello, how's it going? Hello, how's it going? And we've gotten that coming through there right now. And we're going to turn that off before we get some murderous feedback. But the volume on that is pretty significant, I've got to say. Um, again, I don't know how well that carried across in the recording there as we went ahead with it. Again, within the camera itself, the feed, we've got different options there. Again, we don't have a micro SSD installed inside this device. So, unfortunately, the recording there is going to be very difficult to show um, outside of... Uh, kind of already pre-built recorded stuff but I will be showing that later in the video in a slightly different way. We can take snapshots there and save it to the local phone device if we choose. Again we can lower the resolution if we chose so it can be more fluent or more um, highly graphically enabled so we can switch all the way through to the highest density recording there on the mobile phone if we choose or switch right the way back to fluent uh, recording there as well. We can rotate the screen as needed but again that's not going to be hugely helpful for what we're trying to do right now. Quite a few config options as well. If we go into the top there, we can find out more about the camera that we're utilizing, some of the detection alarms, how we want to utilize them, the zone within the field of camera. We can say we want to record in that big circle there. And again, all of this has been done on the mobile app, but the camera is still accessible both via the desktop application and of course, via the web browser there, if we flick between them. So we've got those options open to us. And again, the desktop application does look a bit rudimentary there. It will require um, Flash to be installed, which I know is basically non-existent uh, in 2021. So it's worth bearing that in mind there. Again, let's remove that detection zone there. We can get rid of that. <clears throat> talk about the, so the objectivity. We can talk about how big objects can be. So if we're going to go for personal motion, we can change the difference there in terms of the size of things that we're going for so we can go within that zone there and then save that and that will be our detection zone there with regards to if someone or something walks into field in this case it is a personal tracking 
that we're going for there. Sensitivity can be changed quite easily. And again, that's all flickable and customizable from the mobile app, which is quite handy there. We can enable those push notifications to come through to the mobile app, which is what we're gonna do. And of course, we can set up a siren alert if we choose, which will be deafening when that happens. And that's what it sounds like. And that's an awful sound there to accidentally come across and freak out the rest of your building. Again, we've got all of those filters all largely built into this device and all of them can be configured in a number of key ways from the mobile interface there. So let's come out of it and go straight there back onto the desktop. We can even change and turn on the light there. I know you can't really make that out, but the light there on screen, if I turn that off, you should hopefully make that the slight change there in lightness there on screen. But it's very small, so you can't really make it out there. And again, the Rio Link camera is flicking support there while we're going through those different settings there, as you can see on screen. And again, you can add multiple cameras if you choose. I do have multiple cameras in this environment, which I will be showing you later on. And you can back them up to cloud services if you choose. But again, support of that is a little restrictive there. And I think Reolink really do champion their own cameras more so than anything. So moving slightly away from the mobile app, let's head back into the desktop here. We can see that camera has been running that whole time and accessing it via the web browser. Again, you've got to think about flash being enabled, which may be incredibly problematic for different browsers. We can change a number of these key settings. So you've got everything from volume and zoom and flash, um, all the kind of different installation options there. and again turning the light on if you choose all of them built in but this presented a little bit more old hat a little bit more early noughties design you can change a lot of the streaming feed and resolution of what you're recording there on screen in the advanced setting there you can change a lot of the settings if you choose so again if you're outside and there's going to be light uh, and frame rate flickering you can change that quite easily there if you've got video clips you can create small clips if you want that will be within a certain area and again we can disable clips and they will just be small areas with regards to notifications or just general recording there again going to the cog there we've got more options flip the camera mirror the camera use your sort of stuff there going to the stream this is where you change the resolution quality so you can up that particularly high if you choose or just have high quality uh, video, but lower the frame rate to make sure those file sizes are a little smaller there. And again, fluent resolution is when you want the thing to basically lower latency. So you've got the quality uh, kind of abandoned in favor of just fidelity on those cameras. And that's something you can play with there. All of these are the options that we saw before. And again, we've already enabled and looked at some of those options there with regards to detection. And again, we have set up the personal stuff there on screen already, so we can make sure they pass through shortly. We've saved those. We can go even further with the, the light and dark. Remember, there is night vision here, which will give us that 100 feet night uh, distance there at night time. And you've got the choice to record audio. Remember, it's the in-out camera built in. You've even got the option if you're going to be utilizing third-party um, security software uh, with regards to internally we can have the schedule camera recording when you need it or alternatively have it so that it's feeding into a, another recording device such as a Synology NAS as you see here where I've got two other Rio link cameras built into this Synology surveillance station set up here and we're able to either play around with pan tilt zoom as we see fit or using zoom optical zoom digital zoom all the settings that are built in and those cameras, pretty much all of the Reolink cameras that arrive with the OnViv, O-N-V-I-F label, will be supported by Synology now. Just double check that first, but the bulk of them do support Synology platforms. And there's lots of different options where you can change things up and um, basically create a very customized and very um, unique security surveillance setup there for your needs. It's very straightforward, very easy indeed. If you go into the NAS settings for it, again, the NAS pretty much has dominant control over everything you're seeing here on screen. And these two cameras we have here are from Reolink here on screen, different models, but all just as compatible and as controllable there. And again, adding cameras is incredibly straightforward. Ultimately, the storage there is incredibly customizable and it will work both uh, within the camera as an SD card and of course if you want to utilize a NAS for that storage there 
And again, I recommend this camera. I've always recommended Rio Link cameras. I think they find that lovely middle ground between uh, performance, support, and um, uh, their value price point there. I'm less keen on the one year warranty, and I think um, their software, at least on the desktop form, could maybe do with a few extras being run into. I think it's a lot better now that they can't rely solely on the likes of the uh, browser-based connectivity as much anymore. And I think the, mo the desktop client app is still pretty good and the ability to add multiple cameras as well, so adding that into a feed of four and then pinching in those cameras, that's quite handy indeed with no necessity for uh, additional licenses, of course, as well. But I still think this software lacks some of the bells and whistles that we're seeing on some of the NAS-based software that we've talked about earlier on. And maybe the storage, maybe having some of that storage inbuilt rather than relying solely on SSD cards. Yes, they've got the cloud service there, but I do think some sort of rudimentary, maybe even eight gig internal SSD to act as a kind of default storage area would be quite handy indeed, but I appreciate that would affect the price substantially. But this has been my review and overview of the RioLink RLC812A. Great little camera, incredibly user-friendly, affordable, and it does the job whether you're gonna use their software or a NAS. Uh, always gonna champion RioLink on this channel. They've not let me down yet. Let's hope next time they still continue to excel. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. If you wanna learn more, click subscribe, and otherwise, I will see you next time.